How's everyone going? You're back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to look at how we can interpret distance time graphs. So these can be really important to kind of explain the journey of something. You might be asked to draw a few from a scenario or you could just be asked to work out specific questions that do come from the information that's presented on a graph. So the information that you will get asked is potentially the speed, so when am I moving fastest, when I'm moving slowest. You're going to be asked to find stationary points or times where there's something completely different to what you would expect. You might have to find out the specific distance at certain times. That one's really easy, just reading off the graph. And finally, you might be asked to find the average speed of the entire journey. So just as a recap, we need to remember that speed is equal to distance over time. So our distance divided by time. And on our graphs for these ones, distance is always going to be the y-axis. Y-axis is vertical, so up and down. So this is our vertical axis. Time is always going to go across the bottom, which is our x-axis. So we can say that to find speed off a distance time graph, instead of saying distance over time, if you can see what the y-axis number is and you divide it by the x-axis number, you will always get the correct speed for that period of time. Another way to think about this is rise over run which is equal to the gradient if you've done linear relationships. But if you haven't, don't stress at all. As long as you can read off the graph these two, you're gonna to be totally fine. So we're just gonna look at this graph below and go through some of the standard questions that you're gonna get. So the first thing we're gonna do is try and work out the speed for this first section. So the speed for this first section. So for this section, we've gone from zero kilometers to 40 kilometers. So the distance traveled here is 40 kilometers. And it has taken us two hours. So we divide that by two. So our average speed for that first section of the graph is 20 kilometers per hour. And that's all we've got to do. So as long as you can put those dots in and see what's happening in this stretch, it's not too difficult. The second part here is this horizontal line. So that means that we haven't traveled any distance in this whole hour. So our change in dif distance is zero divided by the one hour that we've stayed there, which is equal to zero. So anytime you see a horizontal line in a distance time graph, it does mean that there's no movement at that time. From here, we've got this steeper part of the curve. So anytime a curve is steep, it means that we're gonna go faster. We're traveling at a faster rate. So we know that this time period is two hours. So that is our five minus three. And then we have to use this same trick to work out the distance traveled. Because we've started at 40 kilometers and we've finished here at 140 kilometers, in these two hours, we've only traveled 100 kilometers. My students sometimes make the mistake of saying, oh, well, that's 140 divided by the two hours, but we just need to make sure that it's only the distance traveled in these two hours. So for this one, the distance traveled is 100 kilometers divided by the hours. So we were traveling at 50 kilometers per hour. For that last section, I think you might be able to do that by yourself, just following this same trick. But the last question that we could be asked is what's the average speed for the entire graph? So that means starting here at zero and going all the way up to our final number. So the average speed was our distance, which is 160 kilometers, divided by the total time it's taken, which was six hours. If you plug that into your calculator, it equals 26.67 kilometers per hour. So these are the major things you're going to be asked to recognize off any one of these graphs. You might be asked to find when is it going fastest? What time is it going fastest? How slow does this car go over a certain period of time? But as long as you can read across the bottom and up and down, looking at the change 
I think you're going to be totally fine. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you later.